Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition is Iron Tank, the Invasion of Normandy, brought to us by SNK. Iron Tank is another great example of the SNK arcade action titles. Titles that are jam-packed, full of tons of enemy power-ups, and just an overall very fun experience. While not exactly a direct arcade port, it is based on the arcade game that was released in 1985, TNK3, or known as TANK, in Japan. The game was released in Japan known as Great Tank for the NES, and interesting enough, the Japanese version of the game actually has a connection to other SNK games, including Akari Warriors, with the main character actually being Colonel Ralph, who you may know from the Akari Warriors games, as well has been in some of the King of Fighters series. However, in the North American release, we just play as a generic soldier named Paul, who has the code name of Snake. When you begin the game, you can either start, of course, a new game right away, use your password to advance yourself farther into the game automatically. However, if you just wait at the title screen a little while, you'll actually get a little bit of backstory. As the game actually begins, we get to see our tank arriving on the shores of Normandy. The ship we came on gets destroyed by a plane, so there's no backing out now, it's just time to move forward and take out some soldiers. Now, Iron Tank has some unique controls that take a little bit to getting used to. You have your A and B attacks, having a gun, as well as grenades. You also have various power-ups that are represented by different letters, and we'll get a little bit into them later on. As the game begins, though, you'll find some normal foot soldiers first. The foot soldiers are actually pretty cool that not only can they, of course, damage you and all that and being a threat, but you can actually just run them over. You don't even actually have to attack them. And also, by running them over, you get a little bit of extra health. And while that little bit of health may not seem like very much, trust me, later on in the game, you're going to be begging for random soldiers to show up so that you can refill your health bar. You can of course see your health bar located in the lower left corner, and when that runs out, of course, your tank ends up exploding, and you have to start back at a previous checkpoint with your next life. Like other SNK arcade games, this game is non-stop action. There is tons of enemies always coming at you. Just advancing the screen just a tiny bit will get sometimes one, two, or even three new enemies to spawn. A little ways in, though, after taking out some normal enemies, we have our first kind of mini-boss. Back away from this boss so he doesn't run directly into you, because that'll cause a ton of damage and probably end up taking you out. Try to stay back away from him. You don't really need to use your power-ups quite yet on this guy. Just keep attacking him with your normal projectile from your gun as well as your grenade, and then be sure to dodge in and out of his spread fire shot that he ends up getting out at you. Right after defeating him, though, continue on, run over some normal soldiers to replenish any health you may have lost, and keep moving on. There's only one real negative to Iron Tank, and that there isn't a huge variety of enemies. But honestly, it doesn't hinder the game, because you really need to learn the enemies, how many hits each one takes, such as the tan tanks taking two hits, instead of the green tanks taking just one, as well as their normal patterns and attack patterns. They'll either move back and forth left and right, up and down, and then they fire in different amounts and different directions with each different enemy. As you've noticed, the area that we're on right now has a ton of trains coming at you. Just be sure that when you're moving along the tracks here, that you keep firing forward with both the gun as well as the grenade, so that you're able to get two or three shots in real quickly to destroy the vehicle before it runs headfirst into you. 
Now, you won't instantly die from one of these things running into you, but usually running directly into another vehicle takes about half your health bar away. A little bit farther up, though, you end up running into some buildings. As you can see, there's some soldiers hidden inside of them. The first one will give you some information, and the other ones will just thank you. But saving them all will, of course, net you a little bit of extra points. Being an arcade-style shooter that SNK likes to do, there is a point system, and I guess in the end, your real goal is, of course, to see how high of a score you can get. And while it may seem like that we're still in the first level, the thing about it is, though, the game is non-stop. It literally just goes from one level right into the next. There's no break telling you that, hey, you completed a stage. No, you just literally keep moving from area to area. Another thing that Iron Tank does that, honestly, a whole lot of other games on the NES didn't provide, especially arcade shooters, is branching paths. Now, granted, a lot of these paths are kind of similar in the end. You're, of course, going to be seeing a lot of the same enemies. But the fact is, you can go to different levels and not necessarily take the same path every time. For the big boss with the giant missile on top of it, stay where I was located on the left or right side, aim your gun up properly, and then just keep firing as quickly in the best way you possibly can. Really ignore the little soldiers in the trees, and just focus on taking out the giant train. Now, one thing we haven't really talked about yet is the controls of the game. As you've noticed, you actually have the ability to shoot in all directions. Getting used to this, though, is very tricky. In order to do so, you actually have to press the A button while moving in a different direction in order to rotate your turret on top of your vehicle so that when you fire out the grenade or missile, that you'll actually fire in the direction that you want to. Getting used to this gameplay mechanic is the real key for being able to get better and mastering this game. Throughout the game as well, you may notice that you'll have the call button flashing in the lower left corner. This is kind of like a codex system, like Metal Gear, that you'll be able to actually get dialogue with different characters and showcase a little bit more of the storyline, but usually they're just there to tell you what's coming up next and maybe a strategy or two. So we really don't have to worry about them in this playthrough, but they're a nice little touch and definitely cool to check out if you've never played the game before. Okay, so after fighting another rematch against pretty much the same giant missile launching machine that we fought earlier, staying on the left and right sides in order to easily take it out, let's talk about the power-ups a little bit. As you've noticed, there's different letters spread all across the ground. Now, the V is represented rapid fire. This, of course, increases the rate of fire by just holding down the button. Normally, you have to keep mashing the A button in order to keep attacking. You have the armor-piercing rounds, they're F, you can shoot through walls and different terrains, allowing them to hit different enemies beyond them. This is going to be key to certain areas with giant turrets that are going to be slightly behind the walls and definitely will help you out later on. The B is the bombshells, the shots that blow up as soon as they get near anything, and these are definitely awesome because they double the amount of damage that you do. Then of course there's L, the long range shots. These of course, well, it doubles the length of the shot that you end up throwing out. Now besides that, there's also the E and the R's. Now the E restores a portion of your health, as you probably have already noticed. And the R is your reserve or refuel option. When you get low on health and you know there's absolutely no energy around, no little soldiers, and you're pretty much down to your last breath, you want to make sure that you equip the refuel option and it'll completely refill your health. As long, of course, as you have enough in the refuel thing. And then there's the question marks. Now, the question marks are the ultimate weapon in the game. By using the question mark at any point in time, you give a giant explosion out that does a ton of damage, not just, of course, wiping out all normal enemies, but it'll also do a ton of damage to the bosses, usually taking out different turrets and stuff that the bosses have along with them. This will definitely come in handy later on. Now, you may be wondering exactly what path I'm taking in the game. As I mentioned, there is multiple paths to the game. The path I've decided to take is pretty much the most straightforward path, and honestly, after exploring a little bit of the game, 
I seem to have the most trouble with this path, so I thought it would be the most interesting to show. This game, as you can already tell, is not easy to get through. With so many different enemies and the bullets flying non-stop, you really have to be careful and reserve your health properly in order to get through. Next up we have another mini-boss, similar to the one we already fought earlier on, except this one has a different type of bullet. The bullets it shoots out actually kind of come towards you. What you'll have to do is stay about in the middle of the screen as far up as you can, because there actually is a border during these battles, in which case you can actually avoid the arcing fire that comes out by standing between the left and center bullets or the right and center bullets. Now you can use some of your power-ups if you want here, I don't use as many power-ups as I probably could because I always am really conservative with ammo, and that really goes for any game I end up playing. With the health though in the game, not only does running over soldiers end up replenishing your health, every time you pick up a letter, besides even just the energy, you get a tad bit of your health back. So even picking up just a normal letter, even if you already have max in that particular weapon, is a good idea. Another thing I really like about Iron Tank is the fact that it really kind of does feel like you're invading another country. I mean, you have long areas of dirt roads with trees all along the sides, and then you'll actually go through a town area. You'll then go to an army base and then some more different towns, so it really feels like you're traveling city to city, slowly making your way to your end goal. Now here comes the first giant turret boss, I like to call him, as you have multiple turrets of different kinds, cannons in this case, and you have to destroy all the cannons before you're actually able to defeat the boss. Here is where we're going to be bringing out the big explosions for the first time. Now this extra explosion will allow you to pretty much destroy the turrets with just two shots, so move back and forth, left and right, doing your best to avoid any damage, but you're going to get shot, and you're probably going to get shot a lot. So just quickly get the explosions out that you need, destroy each turret, and move inside and move on to the next area. The next area inside is a little bit more confined as you're moving along these different platforms along the water. Be careful, avoid some of the train tracks, of course, that you're going to have the giant trains coming down towards you. One other thing I haven't mentioned yet is the landmines. As you probably noticed, they're flashing landmines on the ground. Do not by any means even attempt to run over these, it's pretty much an instant death sentence. A little ways in though, hopefully you're able to grab all the items and replenish your health, as it's time for the big boss here. Now get used to these giant bosses, because you're pretty much going to be fighting similar forms of these throughout the rest of the game. Start off by just moving back and forth and learning the pattern, staying directly out of the direct line of fire of the giant vehicle learning how far exactly it comes down to the bottom of the screen and where it does so it doesn't directly run into you causing you to lose a ton of health. Using the rapid fire button will definitely help you out and allow you to destroy the tank pretty easily. Once it's taken care of though you'll flash back to a new area just be careful that if you're low on health already though just quickly run over some soldiers so that you can replenish a tiny bit of your health. The next area has us moving along some pretty big highway type areas. There's some lines of soldiers moving across the street interestingly enough, as well as tons of tanks that will keep appearing. The paths move diagonal up and right, and then you'll start changing and moving around as you move yourself through the city limits of this area. A nice cool effect is that you have a lot of the streets being completely destroyed until you actually make it just back on the dirt roads, as it really feels like a war zone through this area. Early on, for the first probably half of the game, my main strategy is really kind of getting through the areas as quick as possible. Trying to avoid as much direct conflict as I can by mainly firing just straight ahead of me or to the left and right, but really not staying focusing on every single enemy that ends up appearing. Later on though, the second half of the game, with so many enemies and so much damage being done to you, you really have to slow down and take your time. During the airport section here, you have to be careful of planes that move up and down, or left and right, leaving a giant trail of bullets as they do so. Just be sure not to be directly under the plane in its moving path, because these bullets will destroy you and mess you up pretty quickly.
After the airstrip, you'll actually be inside of a small building with multiple planes. When you make it to the top, you'll actually have to take out two small planes and then the big plane in order to continue. Just ignore the first sets of planes until you're no longer able to continue up. Here, take out the left and right planes, then move up enough that you actually can take out the center giant plane. Doing so right, you'll be able to avoid having any fire coming out of the giant plane before you're actually able to take out the smaller ones. Do your best to stay at a nice little angle here and stay on the far right side of the plane. You'll be able to just barely hit the actual turret from the gun on top of the plane and then the plane will be destroyed and you'll be able to continue on. Once you've destroyed the plane though, you move back outside to the other part of the airstrip. Here there's more planes going overhead, some of which can actually turn slightly, so you'll have to be very careful while going underneath these planes so that they don't turn into you and cause their fire to really do some damage. From about this point on, the game gets a little bit tougher, so you're going to have to move a little bit slower when going through areas. A lot of the vehicles from here on out, while still the same amount of damage is needed to take them out, they seem to fire more and more bullets in a more rapid pattern. Take your time a little bit more now, especially in small corridor areas like bridges or that little area we just passed through, so that one of the tanks or multiple tanks don't end up teaming up on you and doing a ton of damage since you're going to be unable to actually maneuver around the bullets. Up here past some more soldiers, you'll run into another barricade set, so be sure to destroy the barricade and then you'll have a few more tanks right afterwards. The worst tanks probably in the whole game are not of course a type of tank, but any vehicle that ends up spawning behind you. These guys definitely getting in the way and are probably some of the most annoying. Here unfortunately I'm going to have to use my first refuel, as when I run out of health here from the next shot I take, I end up getting full health because of that refuel. The key here though now is since I'll probably need to use at least one more refuel is finding all those letter R's so I can completely replenish the meter. After the next barricade, there's going to be a couple of sets of multi-shot tanks that you're going to have to take out. Pick either the left or right side, I find, this seems to be the best way of getting past most of these tanks with taking the least amount of damage. When you make it to the top, it's time for another turret boss. Since we have some question mark ability, I'll use that to destroy most of the turrets and then go inside. And the next little area is a very tight corridor and you're moving in a diagonal pattern upwards. Be careful of the giant turrets that are set up on top of the barricades and also for the tanks in the very small areas. The area is not very long before you end up reaching the next goal, but just be careful especially of a multi-shot tank at the very end. It's then time for another boss against one of the giant tanks. Here we're going to be using our abilities here. We're going to mix it up with the rapid fire and the explosion shot along with the armor piercing rounds in order to do a lot of damage to this tank pretty quickly. Go to the left side of the screen and fire in an upper right direction and you should be able to easily get lots of shots in on the tank and destroy him before he's able to even get over to the left side. Just be careful though that you have at least some health left before making it to the next little area. Thankfully, after one or two tanks, you'll make it to a little bit of energy as you're crossing along these bridges. Here though, a new enemy is introduced for the first time, the submarines. 
These of course will pop out of the water and launch a couple of shots at you, and you'll have to aim properly in order to actually hit them while they're in the water itself. Here I like to take out at least the one on the right before trying to go up the center area here. You'll then have a couple of random soldier guys you can talk to and they'll just thank you for saving them and get some extra points if you want it. The submarines though can fire in arcing shots and their shots will actually end up chasing you down, so you'll have to be very careful of the bullets they end up getting out. While they only fire one at a time, the fact that they can chase you down can get quite annoying. While the areas are a little bit small when moving from these islands to another island, since there's a decent amount of different bridges to cross, you'll have a variety of different paths to take throughout this little area. Just be very careful that when crossing over some of the bridges, you don't accidentally run into a landmine. In this segment, be sure to take out the two-shot tanks, and of course pick up any energy you end up seeing. Just go slowly though, so only one submarine and one tank will be able to spawn at a time while making your way up this giant pier. One of the keys though is later on in the game, since health is a little bit more scarce, especially in certain forest areas, you'll have to take your time and just take out enemies, then inch a little bit forward, take out a couple more enemies, then do it again and again until you're able to make it to the next section. Moving too quickly upwards, you'll cause too many enemies to spawn on screen and it can be really difficult to take them all out. Here we have another giant boss that we're going to use the question mark ability in order to hit, and then once we're able to actually destroy all the turrets, load up your more powerful shot, and then after the vehicle starts moving back and forth on the very top layer, just keep firing the big blast over and over again at the center red button of it in order to easily defeat it before it's able to really get any shots in on you. Thankfully, right afterwards, a ton of normal foot soldiers appear, as well as an energy bar, so be sure to pick up some extra health and run over all those guys. Also, from time to time, check in though to make sure that you still have a decent amount of weapons to use throughout the next little area. This segment features a bunch of battleships in the water itself with different amounts of guns on each one, and they like to fire out a ton of bullets at a time so you'll have to quickly and be very careful when you're moving into certain areas, move right in between guns' fire so that when they're firing their guns over and over again, you'll be able to avoid all the bullets of the gun until an opening ends up happening. This is definitely the trickiest part overall of the game, is just learning where you're going to be able to sit without taking damage.
When you make it up here, head over to the left, take out another tank, and of course, pick up some extra health. Up here though, it's time for the ship boss. Be sure to equip some of the extra abilities, the rapid fire, and especially the more powerful blast. Here we have to take out two main guns first. Start off on the left side and explode it with only two or three shots of the big blast gun. Then go to the right, and as the ship will go over to the left, when it comes back over, you'll have a good opportunity to deliver a couple of hits to it and destroy it before it's really able to get its rapid fire in on you. Once you're able to destroy the two guns though, just wait for it to explode and then you'll be able to open up the hatch in the center and go inside. Next up we have more tanks but also planes going overhead dropping bombs on you. Now of course these bombs if you run into the explosion will pretty much instantly destroy you. Thankfully the bombs move rather slowly, but the more annoying thing is the screen will consistently keep flashing and the game will slow down because of all the stuff that's going on on screen at one time. You can also use this though to your advantage in order to sneak in some extra shots in against some of the multi-hit tanks while the explosion is going on overhead. We're down to the very final stretch though of the game. Through a few more barriers and just a little bit more, we'll finally make it to the end of the actual game and face off with the final boss. Now at this point though, since we're near the end, they're gonna throw everything they have at you. Tons of multi-hit tanks and tons of foot soldiers, even though you can just run them over, with a lot of them on screen at once, they'll be able to get some shots in on you with their normal handguns. Here's another opportunity where you can actually use your question mark in order to destroy a ton of turrets, as well as the tanks that are going to be on screen at one time. The next little area is another set of train tracks. Be careful, move slowly up, and defeat the multi-hit tanks before continuing on too far. You'll then have the different trains coming down the tracks. Either keep firing straight ahead so you'll be able to destroy them before they run directly into you, or just avoid them altogether by hanging on on the left or right openings. Here I'll use the question mark once again to take out the turret on top of this building before continuing on. Be sure of course to pick up all the power-ups even if you have the bar full, since each item no matter what grants you a tiny bit of health. With the turrets here though, they are dangerous. They fire tons of bullets out pretty quickly and can damage you rather fast. The key though is waiting for an opening. They will stop shooting eventually and you'll have a small second to get in, fire at the turret or just bypass the turret and continue on. Having multiple of the turrets on a building can be definitely dangerous, but if you find the sweet spot, you'll be able to stick in between its bullets and be able to avoid unnecessary damage. Equip your rapid fire and the big blast, especially if you have it maxed out, and take out this train before you actually continue on. Thankfully, it only takes like two or three shots though with the extra explosion in order to easily defeat it. Right after that though, three multi-hit tanks will appear, but thankfully due to the barrier set up and the walls of the building, you'll be able to single out each one of these tanks and take them out individually. Now it's time for the very final stretch of the game. After taking out some single hit tanks, we'll now make it into a big courtyard area. Go over to the very far right to avoid the turret that's sitting on top of one of the trees. After bypassing that one, you'll have a couple more trees with another turret sitting on top of it. Just keep moving on on the far right side to avoid all these turrets. Next up though, you will have turrets on the actual left and right sides of the halls while moving up here. The turrets on the right side, you'll actually be able to destroy with normal fire even from the ground. But the ones on the left side, you'll have to actually use your armor piercing bullets in order to go overhead so you'll actually be able to destroy them. 
Take out each individual turret one at a time and slowly maneuver upwards. Right afterwards, you'll have a little bit more of an open area. Continue taking out the turrets and hang on to either the left or right walls, avoiding the turret fire as well as the mines along the ground. Right after that, you have a very long courtyard and it's time for the final bosses. We start off with a giant building with multiple guns on it. Start off on the far right side and use your powered up armor piercing or your more powerful explosion shots in order to take out the turrets on the far left and right sides. Taking out one at a time will definitely be the best strategy here and moving back and forth to the far left and far right sides as driving back and forth is a good opportunity to do enough damage. Pick up the last few power-ups on the ground, and now it's time for the final boss battle himself. Equip your power-ups and get ready for the fight. Start off by immediately firing at the tank, watching out for its first bullets that fire straight out. It'll then explode to its second form. Once it does so, you'll have to wait for it to actually start moving, stay out of the way of its giant fire, and just hold in the attack button to destroy it easily. The third form, it'll start shooting out missiles and move in a more diagonal pattern. Once again, move along with it and keep firing those rabbit shots as much as possible. Once it's taken care of though, you can sit back and enjoy the ending to Iron Tank. While Iron Tank may not be one of the most popular games on the NES, it brought some unique things. Not only, of course, does it bring great arcade action, the fact of the continuous gameplay and branching paths makes Iron Tank a very interesting and fun game to experience. And the game also has a pretty interesting contrast of some areas being extremely tough to get through, draining your health rather quickly, but then mixing up your power-ups in order to take out bosses makes a lot of the bosses, well, really a joke. But with that, that's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed. <laughs>